Hi, welcome to the part one of AWS Certified Developer Associate Real Exam Questions. Please focus on the concepts to understand the questions and answers. Please subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up if you like my videos. Now, who should take this certification exam? So the guidance says if you have one or more years of hands-on experience developing and maintaining AWS based applications. Now, we all know a lot of people will not have this experience it does not matter you can still go through my videos and even if you don't have experience you can still clear the exams as long as you focus on understanding the concepts what are the other stuff you should know one high level programming language you should also understand different aws services which if you go through other videos in this channel you will understand that but i would be covering this certification in depth so that you don't have to go through other videos or other documentations of AWS or whatever. You should have proficiency in developing, deploying and debugging cloud based applications or writing code for serverless applications. And you should understand APIs, CLIs, SDKs and so on. You should understand cloud native applications to write code. So everything, if you focus on the questions I'm uh, displaying and how I am going through the options to understand what is the right option if you focus on the concepts you will clear the certification exam please note that these are all real questions which has come in the exam and which keeps repeating okay so if you go through my videos these questions the chances of getting same or similar questions is pretty high now let us go through the questions the first question is you have kinesis which is used to load data see kinesis we all know what is kinesis it is a real time system if you want to move the data real time from the iot devices you can use kinesis for example if you have iot devices or in this case a camera device and it is doing monitoring it is doing real time monitoring of your premises you can use kinesis video streams highlighted here this is the video stream you can use it and you can capture this data the capture the videos and send it to any of these systems okay so that is what kinesis does it is a, a middleware system which is used for streaming data so on a real time basis it is the kinesis is used to put the data into a stock market monitoring application now the kinesis stream cannot keep up with the incoming data during simulated peak data rates testing so for example you are doing your peak testing kinesis streams suppose you are sending 10 records kinesis stream is able to process only say six records four records are still in the queue okay that is the problem statement you should understand the problem statement so the problem statement here is it is not able to keep up with the speed of the stream that is the problem statement if you see this this is kinesis this is what we talk about amazon kinesis streams and this is where your source data this is your source this is called producer this is the producer and this is your consumer in the kinesis world you have two things which are very important producer consumer and then in between you have shards this is your stream and stream is made up of these shards you see these shards okay so now it is asking you what what is the problem see you it is asking you need to enable kinesis to handle peak hour traffic so i have already marked the answer since i talked about shard you should increase the shard count shard count is like it is like if you have one work and if you have one resource who is working doing the work or one labor resource that is fine if you have five tasks and if you still have one uh, labor who is doing that work it will be a bottleneck so you have to increase the labor so these shards you you see these shards these shards these shards are the labors you want to process more data more stream coming from here you increase the shards you increase the shards so that it can catch up with the speed of the stream hence option c is the right answer see kpl is used for ingesting data into the streams here you know to keep up with the speed kpl alone will not help the other thing is data retention uh, period so what it means is data retention period what it means that it it will keep the data here in these shards for a long time so that even if uh, out of 10 six records got processed by the consumer four are still here four are still here and waiting to be consumed and what it is saying is you reduce the speed you decrease that so if you decrease that uh, retention period that means these four records will be lost so that is not a solution instead of 10 you are only see you have to process 10 records you have only processed six four is lost 
4 is lost. Okay, that is not what we want. Hence, that is wrong. And the last one here, it is saying that you uh, club everything. Whatever records you have in the stream club together and use a single put record. That is not going to solve it. What you are doing is basically you, to, you will decrease the speed. You will be waiting so that you can club and put in a single put record. You will be decreasing the speed. The right option here is you have to increase the shard count so that you don't have to club. As and when the record keeps coming in, it gets processed. It gets processed here. It gets processed. Okay. Now, Kinesis also has Kinesis data streams. This is just as an FYI. You can take the data. You can take the data from the producer. This is the producer. It can be IoT devices. Okay. Or it can be uh, like we saw a camera device and so on. And the Kinesis data can be put in Kinesis data analytics, uh, Spark on EMR, EC2 instances, Lambda and so on. That is how you can process it. And then these data sets will be available in your BI in a reporting tool to be displayed to the end client or the end user. So before we go to the next question, we should understand what is a swagger. A swagger it is an interface description language and it is used with RESTful APIs. So based on Swagger, this is our next question. The developer must install a serverless RESTful API. So this is the keyword serverless. So I'll just apply a, a KISS funda that is keep it simple and stupid. So this is a very important uh, concept. So if I use that, so based on that, serverless. So I use this keyword serverless and if I scan through the options, which one is applicable for serverless? Uh, SAM, SAM is a serverless template. So this one, this one and Lambda. Lambda is also serverless. So these three will suffice. But we have to pick two. You see this? We have to pick two. And hence, we'll have to go through the options. So I'll not even go to A and B because A and B doesn't make sense. I'll not even go there. So this is totally wrong. And uh, C. So before C, let's go to D. So what we have to do is we have to deploy a SAM template. Okay. And tab SAM template should reference the Swagger file because we first define a Swagger file and then we reference that in SAM. That is the right method. Another way of deploying this is you use an inline swagger definition in a lambda function and invoke the lambda function. So these two are correct. Now, C, why C is wrong is because it's saying you deploy a SAM template with an inline swagger definition. You don't do that. You do not use inline swagger definition in SAM templates, but you should define a swagger file and use that reference in the SAM template. So hence, C is also wrong. So these are our two answers. Let's move forward. Now let's look at this question. See, there is a need for centralized storage. You see this centralized storage of application level logs. There are various applications and all of the logs from these applications should go in a central location. So take this, you have several applications here, Salesforce, Maximo, Redshift and everything has to go to a central location. So this is the central location. This is where all the logs should go. What should go? Logs. Okay. This is this is the problem statement. So let's look at the options. Since we know what is the keyword, the keyword is centralized storage of application logs. Let's understand what are the options. If you see the first one, that is VPC flow logs. What is the purpose of VPC flow logs? It captures information of the IP. You know, it captures information about the network IPs. It is not used to uh, put the logs in the central location. So that is wrong. A is wrong. Okay. Now let's look at B. B is saying cloud watch logs. Yes. The main purpose of cloud watch logs is to centralize and store the logs from different applications. So B looks correct. C says use cloud search. What is cloud search? What is the purpose? Suppose you have a website, okay? And your website needs a search capability. Suppose you type something and it 
is able to search if that is the requirement then you use cloud search it is not used for centralized uh, location of the logs so c is wrong and d d talks about cloud trail so if you want to know what happened in your aws account then you should use cloud trail but if you want to scan through the logs you want to understand the, all the activities of the applications then you should go with cloud watch logs so cloud watch log is the right answer let's move forward see this question we are talking about cloud formation it's a question on aws cloud formation template what is cloud formation it is infrastructure as a code that means you can create a script a small script which will automatically create the infrastructure for example you want to create two ec2 instances what will you do you will go manually into the aws console and create two ec2 instances manually and configure it you will set up the security groups ips ports and so on but what you can also do is you can create a cloud formation template and it creates a yaml or a json code of your infrastructure so the next time if you just run this script automatically the same infrastructure with the same settings and configurations will be created and you don't have to worry about discrepancies in the configuration across two environments that is what cloud formation is used for now this question is asking is where you should uh, if you want to specify sam that is serverless application model where you should put See, you should put in transform. There is no logic to it. This is the way cloud formation template syntax has been designed. So this is a thumb rule. Accept this as a thumb rule that you should put it in transform. This is the right answer. See, the next question is on encryption. Okay. What it says is all the data in transit between the EC2 instance and EBS volume must be secured okay and which one of the following strategies so the the english is a bit dicey here it says which one of the following strategies satisfies the criteria and you should select two criteria okay so let's select two options the first thing is see any ec2 instance it is always associated with ebs volumes the ebs volumes are mounted to ec2 instances so what it means is you have an EC2 instance and the EBS volume is mounted to that EC2 instance. Okay, and they want to secure this path, this path. Okay, so the first option it says create encrypted snapshots into Amazon S3, it will not help you. That means you will take a snapshot of the EBS volume and keep it in. So, this you will move it to s3 a snapshot but how that is going to secure this path that is a wrong option totally wrong let's look at option b it says use rds with encryption see we are talking about ec2 instance it is a compute instance rds is a database a database cannot be a replacement of an ec2 instance this is wrong Okay, option C suggests use IAM roles to limit access to EBS volumes. See, here if you are just using IAM to secure EBS volume through IAM, it doesn't work that way. You will have to secure the EC2 instance through IAM and if the, you are able to access EC2, you can access EBS volumes. So IAM just plugging on the EBS volume will not solve your problem here. That's why I told this is an encryption problem. You will have to enable, you see this option, you will have to enable EBS encryption. That means this EBS volume, you will have to encrypt this. You will have to encrypt this. Okay. And the last option says leverage OS level encryption. So OS level encryption will work here as well as here. Okay, so these two are very secured way in, you, to you know 
uh, encrypt the data hence we will lock these two answers so the next question is talking about see there is an amazon dynamo db database okay and dynamo db data is being read by an application so this is how this is the diagrammatic representation you have a dynamo db database and you have the application which is accessing that data from the dynamo db database so what what is happening what is the pain point the pain point is you are getting provisioned throughput exceeded errors okay and you are getting these errors many times in a day so how should you solve this problem the first option suggests you create a new global secondary index using a secondary index will not solve this because provision throughput exceeded errors occurs because you have exceeded the provision throughput for the table or the secondary index so if you have already exceeded it adding one more secondary index will not help you okay that's why a a is wrong b b says retry the failed read request okay seems logical this should be done you should retry it with exponential back off what is exponential back off means is instead of see retry retry means in now at 11 am it failed now you are retrying it suppose you retry it after uh, one second so exponential back off what it does is instead of retrying after say one second it will retry after three seconds ideally these are in milliseconds you retry every 50 milliseconds and uh, so that there is some gap so why does this occur is it also occurs because in the network there are some issues there are some bottlenecks in the network because of which you are getting this error so sdks the way you write your aws sdk programs is you program it so that there are several retries and you also configure the exponential back off so that the uh, retry will not be done every 5 or 10 milliseconds it will wait for 50 milliseconds and then retry so by that time hopefully the network problem has been resolved so this looks correct to me c says immediately retry the failed read request yeah we can we can immediately try but immediately trying may give the same problem so b is more correct than c that's why i am marking c as wrong and D, it says use DynamoDB update item API to increase the provision throughput capacity of the table. See, my understanding of this system, DynamoDB database, is that you cannot use update item to uh, change, increase the provision throughput capacity. Update item is used to change certain attributes uh, of the table or so on in DynamoDB, but not for this purpose. So D is wrong. So please subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up if you like my videos. This brings us to the end of part 1. See you in the next part.